gratitude expands our perception. It's like if we're focused and worried about something in our life, then all of our attention is going towards a possible worst case scenario. And we experience that biologically, chemically. So if we shift our attention and go to one little, it doesn't have to be monumental. One thing to be grateful for, our perception begins to expand. So it begins with finding one thing. And then something begins to happen and you're able to take your attention away from the thing and you're in a field of gratitude. It doesn't have to be about anything. You're just in this field. That's a, that's a higher state of consciousness. Yeah. And then, then when you're in this field, I don't know if people have ever experienced this, but I know that my mother would sometimes say, not to me, but to my brothers, <laughs> if, you don't, <laughs> if you don't stop crying, I'm gonna give you something to cry about. <laughs> well, the law works like this. If you don't stop being grateful, then the law will vibrationally match and give you more and more to be grateful for. Give you something to be grateful it, for. Absolutely. Yeah. So in the beginning, you find something to be grateful for, and then you grow into just being in gratitude. Yeah. It doesn't have to have an object at all. Yeah. It's a very mature state of gratitude. You wake up, you become grateful. You go through traffic, grateful you got a car. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in line, you're grateful you're in the supermarket line, you can buy some food, whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. Then after a while, you're just in a state. You use it as a cue right. to direct you into this place of gratitude. Right. You know, quantum science is showing us that it's a vibrational field. And this, when it comes to healing, is so paramount because we have to realize that there's a vibrational radio station that we can dial into yes. where healing happens and a different radio station that we can dial into where healing does not happen. Right. And people don't realize that it starts with us. It right. starts with where am I dialing my frequency into and does healing get to happen on that bandwidth or Absolutely. does it not? Absolutely. And, and that becomes a part of our practice. Yeah. You actually have a practice where you practice gratitude. You practice thanksgiving. You practice appreciation yeah. until it becomes your way. You know, and then sometimes when you're down, that's when you practice it even more. Yeah. And then when you're expanding, I like to say, you ask the question, how can it get better than this? And you ask that question, if you're on a downward spiral, you're on that frequency of discomfort, disease, not enoughness, you say, how can it get better than this? And then your mind will start to be flooded with how it can get better. Yes. And then when you're rising and you're having a really great day, you ask the same question, how can it get better than this? Because we're dealing with something that's infinite. Yes. So wherever you are, you're barely scratching the surface of the next moment that wants to emerge through you, the next gift, the next power, the next revelation. Mm -hmm. So you stay in that frequency yes. until you know, you're living on an arc of expanded awareness. Yes, and, and <clears throat> what, can you just speak to us about victim consciousness conversely yeah. to, to what we're, we're speaking about, this, this consciousness of gratitude and, and being in this expansiveness. But what happens when someone is locked in to just, I just can't get out of it. I just can't break through that right, barrier right. And, and, and on a regular basis find this feeling of gratitude. Yeah. Well, interestingly enough, I would say that many, many, many people live in victim consciousness. They have a belief that something outside of themselves determines their destiny, mm -hmm. determines their happiness, their peace of mind, their prosperity. And victims have a victim story. If you ask them why aren't they happy, they know they can articulate to a T what happened, when did it happen, who did it to him, and they know the story so well, that becomes the lens that they look at life through. So they're, they're a victim. So the idea is to become aware of your victim con conversation, mm -hmm. your victim statements, and begin to move into the vibration of giving up blame. You have to give up blame in order to take the next step. You know, forgiveness can actually be summed up into, I give up blame. And then you begin to ask other kind of empowering questions. You know, how can I grow from this? You know, um, what lesson do I need to learn from this? What lesson is the universe giving me right now? Because the universe is progressive, doesn't go backwards, it's constantly expanding. Mm -hmm. You begin to ask a different set of questions. The victim, que the victim questions are, what's wrong, who's to blame, and why me? That's where they live. Yeah, it's all out there. It's all Just push it out there. But when you ask a different kind of question, what lesson am I learning? What gift is being honed in me? You start to get answers because the universe will answer any question you ask. Mm -hmm. And it'll start to move you out of victimhood. It's going to move you through forgiveness too. 
It's going to move you out of victimhood and you'll start to take 100% responsibility mm -hmm. for your own healing. And people are afraid to take that responsibility because they feel so lousy. The last thing they want to think is, I'm responsible for how lousy Absolutely. I feel. <laughs> but so. responsibility and, 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 and blame are not the same thing. Yeah. People, they, they make them synonymous. Yes. You know, I take responsibility, that means it's my fault. No, that's not what we're saying. <laughs> right. We're saying you know, responsibility means the ability to respond. Yeah. So when you take responsibility, you begin to respond to a higher frequency. Yeah. Blame is something else. Blame and shame and guilt, they have no transformational value. They mm -hmm. keep you locked into an old paradigm. The egoic structure will keep you y your old self. But um, when you ask a higher question, you take responsibility. I take responsibility for the thought that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. What is it going to be? Is it going to be a victim thought? Or is it going to be an empowering thought? I I'm taking responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. No one's going to make me think a certain way. I don't care what happened in my past. This present moment right now, I'm taking responsibility for my thinking, yeah. my perception, what comes out of my mouth, my conversations, my actions. I'm taking 100% responsibility. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is inertia then becomes momentum. Yes. You start to move in the direction of your higher conversation yes. and your life changes because you've taken responsibility, not blame. Yeah. yeah. So another thing that I've seen with people is that if they're stuck in shame or, or guilt or, or those kinds of lower vibrational frequencies, that if they'll just embrace it, just be present with it, just yeah. love into that, yes, absolutely. then you're taking this responsibility uh, to, to that level where you are and it starts things in motion. That it's very I don't important. have to be afraid of a feeling that I'm feeling. If I just feel it, then it's gone, right. then it's done. Absolutely. Right? Then we yeah, don't have plus to you're being present it. with it. Yes. You're not, um, when you do, when we do exactly what you just described, you come out of wishful thinking. I wish this hadn't happened. I wish I wasn't here. I wish I hadn't done whatever I did to bring this into manifestation. Wishful thinking goes out the window and you just embrace what is. Yeah. And in that moment of embracing, something happens. You see that you're actually spiritually bigger than the thing that's going on. Yes. Actually, it's in your field, but it's not you. Yeah. And then it begins to dissipate because of your awareness that you're bigger than it. You've totally embraced it. You're not resisting it. You're not fighting it. You're not saying go away. So here it is. Right. And it gets to dissolve. If I can hold space for it, then I'm bigger than it. I'm right. holding space for it. Absolutely. It doesn't have a hold of me. Right. I can embrace it. And that changes everything. It starts this path that we're describing. Everything. Uh, you speak about this path when, with four stages of the development of consciousness. Can you just um, share with our viewers about yeah. that, that structure that, so they can kind of see that? The, the first one we just described is victim. You know, they did it to me. It's somebody else's fault. That doesn't mean that somebody didn't do anything to you. It doesn't mean that bad things didn't happen. We're not discounting that. We're just saying we're not living in that frequency. We're aware that that happened, but we can now move out of that through the power of forgiveness, through the power of giving up blame, and through the power of taking responsibility for our own life. Mm -hmm. Then we move into stage two. Stage two is the manifester stage. I'll give it to you like this first. The first stage is to us, something is happening to us. The second stage is by us, we're doing something. The third stage is through us. Energy is moving through us. Mm -hmm. The fourth stage is as us. We are the energy. We are the presence. Mm -hmm. So in stage two, you're using your mind power. You're using the art of visualization, the creative use of your imagination. Uh, you're re-enchanting the imagination to best case scenarios. You're changing your conversation. You're learning about declarations, affirmations, writing, uh, your, your, how you want to live your life. You're basically recontextualizing your mind. Uh, you, 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 the mind is a set of, of, of law, a set of, of, in a way we've been inputted. You're changing all of that. Mm -hmm. We're doing this. Then something happens. And we start to realize that there's an order in the universe that we didn't create. We didn't create that order. <laughs> we depend on the order. So then we learn about releasing ourselves to it, surrender, yielding, allowing. By us is masculine, through us is feminine. By us is, I call the Nike stage, just do it. Make it happen. Mm -hmm. Th stage three is make it welcome because it's happening cosmically. Mm -hmm. So I start to release myself to it. I'm available, but it's come from the hard work I've done on stage two. Don't transcend what you haven't mastered. So definitely we master stage two. 
but we yield into stage three. And then, and then we begin to have pinprick awarenesses that this life, this presence, it's us. We're, we're it. It's not just operating through us, but it's operating and expressing as us. I'm in it, it's in me. There's no separation. Mm -hmm. The wave is a, is a function of the ocean. Yes. The, the sunbeam is an expression of the sun. No sun, no sunbeam. No yeah. ocean, no wave. No presence, no us. <laughs> exactly. You know, so we start to have pinprick awarenesses around that. And, and some people are afraid of that. They think it's blasphemy. They think you can be at one with God or at one with the presence. No, it's blaspheme to limit it. Mm. You see, mm -hmm. we don't want to limit it because it's omnipresent, because it's everywhere. It must be where I am. Mm. 